My eyes can't close fully after eyelid surgery. What can I do? Cosmetic eyelid surgery is a delicate and precise procedure where the difference between an outstanding result and a complication, such as eyelids unable to close properly, can be measured in millimeters. Eyelid surgery ranks typically at about number three in the top five cosmetic surgery procedures year after year. This means general plastic surgeons as well as non-surgeons offer cosmetic eyelid surgery. However, when it comes to revising complications after cosmetic eyelid surgery, such as the eyes not properly closing, the specialist of choice is a fellowship-trained oculoplastic surgeon. I'll explain how I approach complications from eyelid surgery for people who come to me from around the world in my practice. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. As a cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon, I regularly perform primary cosmetic upper and lower eyelid surgery as well as revision and reconstructive surgery for the eyelids. An important complication associated with upper eyelid surgery occurs due to skin shortage after surgery. In cosmetic upper eyelid surgery, redundant or excess eyelid skin is carefully measured and excised to address eyelid hooding. Additionally, fat can be sculpted to improve the shape and appearance of the eyes. When too much eyelid skin is removed during surgery, this can result in having a serious effect on eye health with the eyelids not being able to properly close. Another cause for eyelid skin shortage occurs when eyelid skin is removed without addressing eyelid ptosis. Eyelid ptosis is a condition where the upper eyelid is lower than it should be, which makes you look and often feel tired. This drooping of the eyelid is associated with the function of a muscle which lifts the eyelid called the levator muscle. Eyelid ptosis surgery requires extensive knowledge and experience that is not part of any other surgical training other than oculoplastic surgery. In order to train as an oculoplastic surgeon, you need to first train in ophthalmology or eye surgery. I find that general plastic surgeons often don't recognize ptosis and remove upper eyelid skin for cosmetic enhancement, even if there is very little skin to remove. In these cases, eyelid skin is removed, but the eyelid still droops since the ptosis wasn't treated. There can also be a shortage of eyelid skin at the same time. With lower eyelid surgery, a skin shortage can also be an issue when lower eyelid skin is excised. Doctors often remove lower eyelid skin thinking redundant skin is causing wrinkles. This is often done during surgery to address the under eye bags called lower eyelid blepharoplasty. Since facial aging is significantly caused by bone loss, particularly around the eyes and cheeks, the skin can appear to sag. In addition, age, sun exposure, and other health-related issues affect skin quality, which results in skin wrinkling. Skin quality can be treated without removing skin. The lower eyelid position depends on a delicate balance of the skin, muscle, and tendons. When surgery such as transcutaneous blepharoplasty is performed by making an incision below the eyelashes and having skin removed, this delicate balance is at risk of being compromised. A skin shortage of the lower eyelid can result in conditions such as lower eyelid retraction and lower eyelid ectropion. I routinely perform lower eyelid surgery by addressing the puffy under eye bags from the inside of the eyelids using a technique called transconjunctival blepharoplasty, which preserves this delicate balance. At the same time, I treat wrinkles with different types of lasers and radiofrequency technology combined with regenerative medicine technology such as PRP or platelet-rich plasma. 
If there is a fold of skin that is overlapping, I'll perform a limited skin pinch type of excision. Coming from a background in ophthalmology, I always emphasize to my patients the importance of optimal eyelid function for proper eye health. For example, the simple action of normal blinking is critical because the eyelids function like windshield wipers to distribute your tears evenly over the front surface of your eyes. Proper lubrication of the cornea, which is the clear part of the eye you see through, is necessary for optimal vision. People with an eyelid skin shortage complain of having irritation, such as a foreign body sensation, and dry eyes because the eyelids can't function properly to lubricate the surface of the eye. Patients with upper or lower eyelid skin shortage report that sleep is difficult because the eyes don't fully close, leaving a gap resulting in irritation, mucus production, and blurred vision. No surgeon is immune to dealing with complications or unanticipated outcomes. However, the optimal management of complications is critical. Much of eyelid surgery issues such as skin shortage, retraction, or undiagnosed ptosis can be managed through the basic principle of restoring anatomy for optimal appearance and function. I find that a lot of patients who come in for revision eyelid surgery underwent several attempts by the original surgeon to improve the patient's condition with ineffective surgical procedures which often makes things worse. When evaluating a patient with difficulty with eye closure, I look first at the immediate management of the eye itself to ensure preservation of vision and eye function. I look at specific anatomic deficiencies, such as skin shortage or internal tissue scarring. I determine if it makes sense to wait and allow for tissue relaxation to potentially improve the patient's eye closure without surgical intervention. If there is a significant upper eyelid skin shortage, an option is to do a skin graft. In the lower eyelids, the balance of anatomic components when compromised often requires procedures such as skin graft, lower eyelid support graft, and the repair of the canthal tendon or the tendon supporting the eyelid. In cases where eyelid ptosis was not addressed at the time of surgery, I approach this problem through ptosis surgery procedures, such as levator muscle advancement, or from behind the eyelid with a technique called conjunctiva mullerectomy. I typically perform revision eyelid surgery in my private office surgical facilities. I also perform this surgery with local anesthesia and light IV sedation. People coming for revision eyelid surgery are often quite relieved that they aren't going through general anesthesia again. Although complications can occur with any procedure, eye exposure and the potential for compromise in vision makes the outcomes of primary eyelid surgery and revision eyelid surgery more than just about appearance. Restoration of function, appearance, and character to your eyes is possible in most situations should you experience a problem after undergoing eyelid surgery. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for your question.